Hi, we're going to look at solving a differential equation with a piecewise defined forcing function or input function. This is example 9 from our in-class notes. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is write our function f of t using that unit step function. And remembering that that unit step function is defined so that it outputs 0 when t is less than a and 1 when t is greater than or equal to a. Alright, so my f of t function is shown here in the graph. It's made up of line segments. So I'm basically going to be writing equations of lines, but I need to turn them off and on at the appropriate times. Alright, so first we're going to start with the line that goes from 0, 0 to the point 1, 2. So you can go back to your basic algebra and just kind of think through y equals mx plus b, the slope is 2, the y-intercept is 0, so this would be y equals 2t. So you're going to start with that function. I'm not going to worry about the fact that this function is not defined for t less than 0. When we do Laplace transforms, we're really just looking at that on a domain for t greater than or equal to 0 anyway. So I'm not going to worry about the fact that this one starts at t equals 0. Uh, but I'm going to start with that function f of t equals 2t on. And then at t equals 1, I want to turn off that function that was already on. So to do that, I'm going to subtract the function that I want to turn off times the step function at t equals 1. And if you think about that unit step function, remembering that it will output 0 when t is less than 1. So when t is less than 1, I'll just have f of t equals 2t, as is shown in the picture. And then when t is 1 or bigger, that unit step function will output 1. So it will have 2t minus 2t, which will just be 0. So that will turn off the 2t function. Then I want to turn on another function at t equals 1. So I'm going to add the function that I want to turn on at t equals 1 times that unit step function at t equals 1. And then I want that function to stay on until t equals 3 and then I want everything to be off. So I'm just going to subtract that function that I want to turn off times the unit step function that initiates at t equals 3. Okay, so you can verify by thinking through the zeros and ones that these unit step functions output on different intervals of t that you really get the graph that is shown in the graph above. So I've gone ahead and written that f of t function using that unit step function. And then I want to think about using the table of Laplace transforms to help me take Laplace transforms of that when I have that on the right-hand side of my differential equation. So I have a couple of terms in the differential equation that just involve a constant times the unit step function. So that's row 19 of our table. When I apply the Laplace transform and use that linearity property, so I separate it term by term and pull those constants out front, those last two terms are going to be this row 19, just a constant times that unit step function, one of them at t equals 1 and one at t equals 3. But the second term in my f of t, the 2t times u sub 1 of t, I need to do a little bit of work on that. I talked about this in a prior video, but for that one I'm going to be using this second line that I have here, row 20, on our table of Laplace transforms. And my unit step function is stepping at t equals 1, the a is 1, so I need the input for this function to be t minus a, t minus 1. And I can go ahead and do that as long as I then keep track of the algebra and balance that out by adding one also in there and then simplify using the algebra. So let's go over here and rewrite that whole function with the t minus 1 where I want it to be. Okay, so you can see here I have my t minus 1 that I wanted where I had a t and then I plus 1 as well to balance that out so that I don't change the function. My next step is going to be to separate that out so that I can get the t minus 1 and then kind of whatever's left over. So I just need to use appropriate algebra, so that might be different depending on the kind of function you have here. This one is pretty straightforward because all I have to do is distribute through 
the minus 2 and the unit step function. But I'm basically going to group that so that I have the t minus 1 part that I wanted and then the leftover part that is just what I needed to balance the t minus 1. All right, so the part that I just underlined in green here is the part that I got from distributing that through. So I have the t minus 1 function times the u of t minus 1 that I wanted. And then I have this minus 2 times u sub 1 of t, which came from distributing my minus 2 through to the plus 1 term there. All right, there's one more step of simplifying that I want to do before I'm ready to apply the Laplace transforms to my differential equation. When I did that simplifying, I've got a couple terms here that are going to cancel, and that will make my work easier if I go ahead and cancel those before I plug into the differential equation and do the Laplace transforms. So let's go ahead and write down the whole differential equation with this function as the right-hand side. And then I can apply the Laplace transform to both sides of the differential equation. When I do that, I'm going to use the linearity properties and separate that term by term and pull those constants out front. On the right hand side, when I take the Laplace transform of the first term, I'll have the 2 times the Laplace transform of t, so you'll just look that up in the table like usual. Laplace transform of t is 1 over s squared. For the next term, I'll have my minus 2, and then I need to be a little careful about this. This is that line 20 on our table of Laplace transforms here. So I need to be clear about what is my function f of t that has t minus a inside of it. So again, the a is 1, and then the function that has t minus 1 input into it is f of t equals t with t minus 1 inside that function. So that's important because when I take the Laplace transform of that, I'm going to have e to the negative a s times capital F of s. And remember that that capital F of s is the generic notation that we use for the Laplace transform of little f of t. Not f of t minus a, but little f of t. All right, so when I apply that line 20 with a equals 1, I will have e to the negative 1s times, and then my capital F of s will be the Laplace transform of the function that has the t minus 1 put into it. So the Laplace transform of t, that's 1 over s squared. All right, and then for the last term on the right-hand side here, I'm going to have minus 2 times the Laplace transform of u sub 3 of t, that's line 19 on our table with a equals 3. Okay, our next step is going to be to plug in our initial conditions. I have x of 0 equals 1 and x prime of 0 equals 0. And then I'm going to rearrange some terms here to simplify that. On the left side, I'll have two terms involving x. I will have a term in the middle here, minus s, that I want want to add to the other side of the differential equation. And when I do that, sometimes we combine that with other terms that are over there. So I want to pay a little bit of attention to the right-hand side here and think a few steps ahead to that inverse Laplace transform to think about how I want to simplify this right-hand side. When I do the inverse Laplace transform at the end, I'm going to also be using line 20 here on some of the terms anyway where I have e to the negative a s times capital F of s. So that's going to be involved in our second term and our third term on the right hand side here. But the first term, the 2 times 1 over s squared and then this plus s that I've added over, those don't have an e to the negative a s in them. So I'm going to go ahead and combine those and get a common denominator of s squared and combine those two terms. All right, so again, I combine the 2 times 1 over s squared and the plus s at the end to get 2 plus s cubed all over s squared. All right, next I'm going to divide through by s squared plus 1.
Okay, and so now we're going to prepare to do our inverse Laplace transform. So basically, we're going to force things to match what's in our table so that we can then apply the inverse Laplace transforms. For the two terms involving e to the negative as times a function of s, notice that I've written that in that form so that I have e to the negative as times a function of s. So it's helpful to write it like that instead of in some other equivalent way, but that sort of matches what we have on the table. Uh, the other issue though is that these things that I have, this 1 over s squared times the quantity s squared plus 1 and the 1 over s times the quantity s squared plus 1, I do not have those exactly in my table here. So hopefully you recognize that partial fractions would be helpful. So in this problem I actually have three separate partial fractions problems to do. One on this first term that does not involve any e to the negative a s part. And then another partial fractions on the second part, the 1 over s squared times s squared plus 1. And a third partial fractions on the last one here. So three separate partial fractions to do. I'm going to go ahead and write those out, but go through that very quickly because hopefully at this point partial fractions isn't too hard for you. Okay, so I've done all the partial fractions. I'm going to go ahead and write the differential equation with all of that stuff separated out so that I have all of my partial fractions in the equation so I can go ahead and do the inverse Laplace transform. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. I've written my each of my partial fractions problems in brackets here. So we are almost ready to go ahead and apply the inverse Laplace transform. This very first bracket here, I will want to go ahead and split up my s minus 2 over s squared plus 1 into s over s squared plus 1 minus 2 over s squared plus 1. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and apply our inverse Laplace transform here. Uh, for the first few terms, those are pretty straightforward. When I get to these last few terms here involving the e to the negative s and the e to the negative 3s times some other functions, we have to use that line 20 in that table of Laplace transforms, and those are a little bit more difficult, just a lot of details to keep track of. So let's go ahead and do that. For the next part here, I'm going to be using line 20, and for this part, for line 20, my A will be 1, and then my capital F of S is 1 over S squared for one term, and 1 over S squared plus 1 for another term here. And we need to remember when we do that inverse Laplace transform that we're going to have that T minus A to substitute in. So that's a little bit tricky on that part. So I'm going to have my unit step function at t equals 1 times the, the lowercase f of t minus a. So what I want to think through here is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared. That's f of t equals t, but I need to shift that so that I end up with the t minus a, shift that one unit to the right so that I end up with that t minus 1 inside that function. So I'm going to end up here in my answer with t minus 1 input into that f of t function. And then for the second term here, my lowercase f of t, the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 1, 
is sine of t, but again, I need to shift that by inputting t minus 1 into the input of that function. So I will have minus sine of t minus 1. And then for the last brackets here, I'm going to be using that same line on the inverse Laplace transform part of the table here, but my a is going to be 3. All right, so I'm going to have the minus 2 for the constant out front and then times u of t minus 3. That's that unit step function stepping at t equals 3. Then I'm going to look up the inverse Laplace transform. Inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is just 1. So normally I would need to shift that by inputting t minus 3 in place of t there. But in that case, since that's just a constant function, when you shift a constant function left or right, it's the same function. So kind of thinking about that a little bit geometrically. And then on the very last term here, the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 1 is cosine of t. But again, I need to shift that so that I end up with a t minus 3 as the input of that function. Okay, at that point I have my solution, my x of t, uh, that is written with unit step functions. So it did also ask us to graph this, so I'm going to go ahead and write this kind of as a piecewise defined function so we can think about graphing it, and then we'll look at the graph on Desmos. So if I want to write this function in terms of what what the function output actually is on different t intervals. Uh, I've got two parts here that turn on at t equals 1 and then the last one at t equals 3. So before t equals 1, all of the last part, the two unit step functions output 0. So before t equals 1, I just get the part that's in my first brackets, 2t plus cosine t minus 2 sine t. At t equals 1, that unit step function u of t minus 1 outputs 1. So I've got all this stuff that I had before, and now I'll have minus 2 times 1 times t minus 1 minus sine of t minus 1. You could use some algebra and simplify that. There's a 2t and a minus 2t that you'll get if you simplify that. There's some trig identities you could use if you really want to. I'm not going to go ahead and do that. And so that'll be true for t equals 1 to 3. And then after t equals 3, both of the unit step functions are going to output 1. So all this part at the beginning is not going to go away. I'm still going to have all that. 2t plus cosine t minus 2 sine t. And then the unit step function that turns on at t equals 1, I will have a 1 outputting for that, so I'll have minus 2 times all of that stuff. And then the last part here, I'll also have minus 2 times 1, that unit step function will output 1, times all the stuff that's in that bracket. Okay, there is my solution for this differential equation written as a piecewise defined function. Let's go ahead and look at the graph of that using Desmos. Okay, so you can see here I have graphed my function that we got in Desmos, and I've used the notation, notice the notation Desmos uses to restrict the domain for the different pieces here. Uh, Desmos also doesn't like squared off brackets to enclose functions, so I've used double sets of parentheses. Uh, but you can see here that I've got the first part here from t equals 0 to 1, that's shown in red. And then the second function here is the second part from t equals 1 to 3. And then in green, I have the whole thing for t greater than or equal to 3. So the, what this would represent is the output of that function where I ha perhaps have a spring mass system or a circuit described by the left-hand side of that differential equation and an input function, some kind of forcing function applied to that where I've got sort of different forces or different voltages applied over different intervals. And so after t equals 3, there are no new forces applied. So the response to that input function would be what's shown in green for t greater than or equal to 3. All right, there's a lot of details here. So look over that. I also did post the solutions for this in our Canvas. So you should be able to look at that as well.